Hello everybody, welcome back to part 2 of the Blender Clock Tower tutorial. Congratulations if you made it to part 2, and you made it through part 1, that was a long video, I know, and there was a lot of modeling, but it's going to pay off. Okay, so in this video we're going to be doing materials, texturing, and compositing at the end. Alright, so let's get started. Um, I deleted this, this, uh, this cube this pillar <laughs> over on this side and so we can just totally focus on this one then we'll duplicate it after we uh, add the texture and everything and so I've, I've tried recording this part twice and each time the UV the UV unwrapping has totally messed up okay so I figured out a way to do it I deleted this top face right there there's there's a little face right there I deleted it okay so you delete that face I also deleted this face and then I um, added, hold on, let me just go into the this over here. I added a mark seam right down the middle of this one. So just box select it and click mark seam and that should do it. Control E, mark seam right there. And then I selected everything, uh, made sure it's set to scale. So control A, scale, and then click U, smart projection, boom and then it finally worked. Okay, so scale that up. Now we'll go into the node editor. Click new. I'm going to name this material uh, brick. Okay. And then just and to close that, we'll add in a mix shader right here. So uh, shader, shader, <laughs> mix shader right there. Add in a glossy shader as well right there. And then we're going to add in the texture. So this texture I got off of polygon.com. Is it polygon.com? Hold on. Yeah, polygon.com. Um, this is a, a website that Andrew Price, he owns. And you've probably heard of him. He's a very big Blender person. <laughs> um, this, you can start your th uh, free 30-day trial, and I think you have to pay like $10 or something like that so go to this website and you can get the for the textures that I'm using for free and then you know after a month you know you have to pay for it but go get it and this texture is called let me try to find it right here wall tiles underscore one so just type in wall tiles and you'll be able to find it okay and then I'm gonna plug uh, I'm gonna change this factor to 0 0.05 let's just see how that looks right now for a second Nice. I think it's a little too much scaled, so go into the UV image editor, editor and scale it down. Yeah, that looks better. Nice. Now let's go back to the node editor. We're going to do a couple more things. Shift D on this texture and then add in the normal map. You should have gotten it once you download the texture. This one right here. Open up that normal map and then change the color to non color data and then also add in a vector normal map right there that's what tells blender how to read the texture add it into the normals and then set the strength to about three okay so then let's right click on this one nice that is looking awesome okay so then we're gonna add in the same exact texture brick and then we're gonna click the little plus sign that makes it its own material we're gonna call it dark brick and then all, that's not how you spell brick, <laughs> dark brick, right there. We're going to add in a hue saturation node, and that will just change the color a little bit. So right there, let's add in the preview. So chain, bring the saturation up, and then the value down, and that will make it darker, as you can see it right there. Uh, maybe one more. Yeah, that looks fine. And then we're just gonna add in that uh, that material in a couple of parts. This one we're gonna add it in. So just go around, not you. Just go around, select this entire thing, right there. Boom, boom, and then click assign. Okay. And then let's add in. Um, let's go to a UV image editor and find that uh, this right here. So it looks like the inside is darker, the top part is dark, so let's select the top part and click assign on that brick texture. And then it looks like there's the, the rings right here are, uh, are darker. So come over, come, let's select you, select this entire part, wait, there we go. And then, actually I didn't, I'll add the material to that one in a second. 
<clears throat> it looks like this part is dark, so I'll select you, boom, boom, and then look underneath, alt right click. Same thing for this part, and then click assign on that dark texture. That should do it. Okay, so then we'll we'll add the texture to this part. Okay, so just go into uh, edit mode, and let's just see how this looks if we do smart projection. Boom. Nice, that looks good. Scale that up, and then select brick. And then go into texture view so we can see the scale. That is way, way too small. Scale it down. Try to make it uh, fit this part. Okay, that looks good. Same thing for you. You, smart projection. Okay. Scale it up maybe. And add in the brick. How does that look? Too big again. That looks great. All right, so then we'll just box select you and add in the other uh, dark brick. Click assign right there. Same thing for these down here. Alt right click, or uh, just box select it, assign, and then, whoa, what just happened? Okay, same thing down here. Click assign, and then this one right there. Assign. So that should do it. Let's go into the material view to see what it looks like. Nice, that's awesome. And you know what, I have not saved this. I should really save it because if this crashes, I am going to be so mad because I've spent over an hour working on it. Okay, so now the that clock tower or that uh, pillar is done. Okay, so we can duplicate it now. So box select it, D, select that. And I did that by uh, pressing B and then middle mouse to deselect. Right click on the empty. Okay, everything is selected. Shift D and then just move it over there. Look at that. Make sure it's lined up with that one. Okay, good. Nice. Now let's start doing the clock itself. So the numbers I'm going to add in like a yellow shader thing. So go into the node editor, node editor, and where is the nodes? There it is. Okay. So add in a mix shader right here, mix. We're gonna have to do this for every <laughs> material, okay? Boom, and then change it to like a yellowish gold color. And something like that. Change the factor down to 0.1. Roughness maybe, roughness is fine. We'll just leave it right there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna set it to 0.1 because I can. This is too dark. Bring it up. That looks good. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, and then we'll just select all the way around, not you. Um, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, and there, and there, and then this one last. Then press Control L and click Materials. Now every single one of those has it. Great. Um, you know what, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit and grab the UV image editor and find that reference image that I used, and so I can see what I want. All right, um, let's do the material for you and you and you. Okay, I'm just gonna, wait, what was this one called again? I'm just gonna call this one yellow, so I know. And then I'm gonna select the hand and then this, oh my gosh, there we go. <laughs> and boom. grab that yellow material and click new. And then we're gonna set this one to black, or we're gonna call it black, and then just uh, bring it all the way to the center and then bring it down. Make sure it's not all the way black, something like that. The factor, let's go 0 0.01, and the roughness, let's go 1.5. Uh, there we go. Then click on materials. I did control L right there, materials. And then we'll also set the, the color to black so we can just see it visually. And now this part, I'm going to make it white, so I'm just going to select that black one, click new, and change it to white, or set the name to white, and then bring it up right about there. And also, you, you're not the right color, bring it up. Then just select the circle, and white. There we go. Good. Now, let's zoom in here. Let's start doing the, the back. Okay, so it's just this one's easy. Boom, right there, click U, and project from view. 
Alright, how does that look? That looks... that's not what... Pro that project from view. It's not a rectangle. It is a square. Project from view bounds. No. Uh, okay, there we go. Alright, and then select brick. That should be good. Let's see what it looks like in texture view. Scale it up just a tad. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more. Nice. And then we'll do the same thing for you. You project from view, scale it up, and select brick. How does that look? It needs to be scaled up. Uh, right about. Make sure the texture is lined up. Good. And then I'm just going to select you, do a quick U uh, project from view, and then set it to the dark and scale it up maybe. Yeah, that's fine right there. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to really see it. Alright, let's grab our reference image again to see what we need to do next. This part right here needs to be the... Alright, there we go. Let's do cylinder projection this time. How does that look? That looks fine. <laughs> then go brick. How does that... that is that fine? Scale it down. feel like it's stretched maybe? Yeah. That's fine right there. Then we'll just select U, uh, Smart Projection, click OK, scale that up, and set it to the dark one. The dark, uh, dark, right there. Nice. How does that look? That looks great. Same thing for U. U, Smart Projection, OK scale it up and select dark. Awesome. How does that look in the camera view? That is looking great. The texture is completely messed up right there though. Hold on, I need to fix that. <laughs> okay, right click on the triangle and then instead of doing the project for me, let's just do smart projection. How does... Okay, everything is rotated. What in the heck happened? Oh gosh, Blender, if you could just UV unwrap my images the correct way, everything would be fine. But no, you don't. Alright, um, what happens when we just unwrap it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh god, okay. You, you know what? It's fine. Project from view. Scale that up. It's it's okay. I'm just gonna select the inside here, the inside there, and boom, boom, and go unwrap maybe. Would that help? Yeah. There we go. I fixed it. Yes. Good. That's much better. Now you can see the texture and it's not being stretched. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. Great. Okay, so now this part right here, this is going to be a different texture. So click new and then add in the texture. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on, let's place it right there. Boom, and then open. Okay, where did I put it? Is it in this one? Yes, this marble texture right there. Open up that image and that looks good right there. <clears throat> Let's add in a mix shader. So shader, mix, place it right there. Uh, glossy, glossy right there. Plug that in. Set it to 0 0.05. That should be good. Also just press um, shift D. Do I have a normal map? I think I saw a normal map, right? No, I don't. Ne never mind. Delete that. <laughs> I'm going to take the color out of the texture and plug it into the displacement of the of the output material output. Okay, so that should add a little bit of bump to it. Good. And then the last thing that we need to do is this one right here. You unwrap. That should be perfectly fine. Then add in the brick texture. Good. UV image editor and scale it up just a tad. All right, how does that look? Everything's looking good. We have to do the same thing up there. 
So just you smart production, okay. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna do what was this hold on, what was this one called again? This wasn't called I'm just gonna call this one tan. Okay. So select you tan right there, click the little plus sign. We have to do one last thing to this material. Alright, so node editor and we're gonna add in a hue saturation node like we did for the the dark brick so color hue saturation plug that into right there and then just bring the color down to point three that should be perfectly fine how does that look in the material view nice everything's looking good Okay, so now all of that is done. Now we can start duplicating it. So press Shift C to snap the cursor to the center. Everything should be square if you followed the tutorial. So set the pivot point to 3D cursor. Block select everything. Don't select you. Shift D, rotate it 90 degrees. Then go into front view. How does that look? Nice. That is looking awesome. Same thing over here, box select you, don't select you. Shift D, rotate 90 degrees. Look at that. It looks like though this is sticking out just a little bit, so we need to, hold on, um, grab you, bring, wait, bring you in and then just grab you and bring you in. There we go, that fixed it. Same thing over here, I guess. Uh, just grab you, bring it in. Right there. And then we'll just grab this face right there that I selected. Oh gosh, don't crash on me, Blender, please. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, there we go. Um, it, it's fine. It's fine. We're fine. <laughs> boom, boom, and bring that in. X. Right there. Um, there's one more right there. Boom, boom, bring that uh, along the X. There. That's fine because you're not going to be able to see behind it. Okay. Great, now let's do the world settings. And also I'm gonna save because it almost crashed right there. <clears throat> All right, so click use nodes on the world and then we'll just add in a environment texture. I'm gonna be using an HDR and you can just go on to Google or something, type in HDR. There's this website that gives away free ones. I'll link it in the, in the description so you can go get it. I'm gonna use 14 HDR right there. Open up that image. I'm gonna set the string. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at one. And then also I'm gonna add in a sun node and then we're gonna, that's gonna be our main source of light. So the sun, rotate it. Oh gosh, no, 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 change it to, change it to a bounding box and then rotate it like that okay bring it up boom going to this going to side view yep everything's looking good right there and I'm gonna set the strength of this sun sun lamp to three and then we'll go here and click shift Z let's see how that looks Nice, that is looking cool. You know, this is actually better than my um, my practice run of this tutorial. I like this version much better. That's looking awesome. Okay, that 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 looks great. All right, let's do a, a render real quick, and then we can jump into the compositing. So save it, click render, and then I'll be right back. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I like it. Um, it looks like kind of plain though, there's not a lot of like pop to the image, so that's what we're going to be doing in the compositing. So let's go right here and click compositing, 
Click Use Nodes and Backdrop. Let's just get rid of these. Click N. Control Shift Left Click to pop a viewer node right there. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is add in a little bit of a glare to like this part right there. Okay, so add in a, where's that filter? Glare, yep, right there, plug that in. And then bring, uh, let's change it to fog glow. Bring the threshold down just a little bit. Yeah, let's add in a little, maybe one more. Okay, let's go 0.7, okay? And then we'll bring that over here. We'll add in a color balance node. I'm gonna change it to more of like a warm, sunny type color, you know? So let's go right there. How does that look? Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Right about there. And here. Nice, that looks pretty good. I'll move them over here. And then I also want to add in a uh, brightness contrast node. Place that right about there. I want to bring the contrast up just a bit. So let's bring it up, 0.5. Good, and then the brightness down just a little. I didn't see any difference, hold on. Is it doing anything? Yeah, it's doing a little bit. Okay. Uh, maybe the contrast was a little too much and the brightness a little too much. Okay. Bring that over here, and then I want to add in maybe a hue correct node. I don't know really what this does. <laughs> I've been trying to play around with it. Okay, so that that's interesting. What happens if I go up? Okay, so it adds more saturation. So let's go like right about there. How does that look? That looks good. Um, what happens if I move this one up? Hmm. Okay, <laughs> I'm just playing around. Um, let's plug that in right there, and then we'll add a vignette. Alright, so color, mix, you guys know how to add a vignette if you've been following my tutorials. Um, where is it at? Filter, blur, and then also a distort lens distortion right there. Change the distort to 1, plug it in, then uh, change it to fast, relative, click the Y, 20% on both of these, and then plug it in and also change it to multiply. Nice. Let's go 0.7 on the factor. Very cool. I wish I knew how to change the background. I know how to do it in Photoshop, but I don't know how to do it in Blender. So if you guys know how to do that, please tell me, because I want the background to be more of like a, uh, more of a warm color instead of like cloudy, you know? Maybe this is, maybe that will help, kind of. All right, well, there it is. All right, so here is our before image and then our after image. That looks pretty good. It still could use a little bit more. I think the color needs to pop. I think I'm gonna, I might change the HDR. I don't think that's a very good HDR, but that's gonna be it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And if you made it to the end, congratulations, you did it, you, oh, what the heck, did I forget to add a material to that one? Oh my gosh, alright, I'm, I need to fix that, <laughs> but you can do that, and you can change the HDR, whichever one you want, I'm going to leave that up to you, so tweet to me what you guys make, I would really, really love to see what you guys make, if you made like something like just the exact same thing or if you changed it a little bit I would love to see it so make sure to tweet that to me all all the links are down in the description so yeah thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial goodbye